My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. I wanna talk about what most new dividend investors get wrong. This last week I've been thinking a lot about you know, some of the issues and challenges that I had over these last couple of years while trying to reach financial independence. I've made a lot of mistakes and I was thinking, man, if I could only go back in time and do a few things different, things would have worked out so much better for me, probably would have been able to retire a year or two earlier, probably would have had a lot less sleepless nights and a lot less stress, but that's okay. As someone who just reached financial independence and retired early, I think I can share a few bits and pieces of, of some wisdom that I've learned along the way. Now, this is nothing that I read in a textbook or, or saw on a blog or an article. This is just really from my own personal experiences. And I think that this may be helpful to you if you're a new dividend investor, or maybe you're somebody that's been at this for a couple of years and you're trying to reach financial independence and want to retire early off of your dividend portfolio. Because that's what my wife and I did here this year. We reached Barista Fire at the age of 37. So when thinking about this video, I was thinking, what could I share with you if you were sitting down next to me and we were having a conversation and I'd say, hey, listen up. This is what I struggled with. This is what you should focus on. And I want to share that with you here today. And if you're a new dividend investor and you're excited and maybe overwhelmed at the same time, and you're feeling that things are a little bit more complicated than they need to be, trust me, I've been there. You go and you click on YouTube and look at different millions of different videos on, on investing and you're just overwhelmed. Just understand that you're not alone and that we all have to start from somewhere. And you know, you're going to make mistakes in the beginning and that's okay. And it's probably gonna look a little like this. Hello, Mr. George. How much you pay for the for the new guy? 20 bucks? No, too much money. He's no good, no good operator. He's not he, he's not doing nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. The main point that I want to make in this video is new dividend investors, when you're trying to understand everything and kind of trying to figure out what's right for you with among all the information that's available out there, it can feel a little bit foggy at times. And it can be difficult to try to see through the fog to see where you're going. But unfortunately, when you're new at something, you don't have all the answers. Okay, and that's very normal. But the main point that I wanna make in this video, what most new dividend investors get wrong is they don't understand really what they're investing in and why they're investing in it. And I'm gonna tackle both of those concepts in this video. To start off, I wanna share a brief story about myself when I was a kid. Growing up in the early 1990s, I loved collecting basketball, baseball cards. I love going to the little store that is now, that was then turned into a golf course that is now turned into a multifamily housing complex. A long, long time ago when there was little, you know, card stores that you can go and you could buy collectibles or in a, you know, ghost town of a mall. I loved going and looking at basketball cards. I always looked at the price of the card and thinking to myself, maybe one day in the future, someone else will pay more for this card than what I paid for. And it was kind of like a little bit of an investment. I didn't really have a time horizon. I just thought in the future, somebody else is going to pay me more than what I bought this card for. And it was very similar to like with gold. You know, I would always hear you want to, if you want to invest, invest into gold. Gold is forever, right? And you can invest in it. You pay for it, you know, $10 today. Somebody will give you $20, you know, next year. And I really didn't understand the concept of what that really meant and what I was investing in. And so the way that I looked at it was I was going to buy it today and then someone was going to buy it for more in the future. But the thing that I was buying didn't really produce anything. The basketball cards from Michael Jordan, they didn't produce anything. The gold didn't produce anything. The gold could be used by another company to produce something, but the gold coin itself didn't really do anything. So this was a little bit confusing as I was growing up. I didn't really understand about the concept of cash flow and passive income, where something is producing something. I only really have the idea of I buy an asset or I buy something and it will appreciate over time. And that's the only way to think about investing. 
And this whole concept of getting paid while you sleep, you know, it's kind of a buzzword now. It really didn't occur to me until much, much later in life. And so I didn't really understand what I was investing in. And then later on, once I started learning more about investing, I understood that when you invest into a company, a business, that is exactly what you're investing in. You're investing in a business that produces something. And those companies that are the most innovative and the most productive and that drive the most shareholder value, those are the companies that you want to invest in. And you want to see it and view it in that way that you're investing in a business, something that is producing something, producing value. And oftentimes what we get wrong, especially if you're a new dividend investor, is when you think about buying a stock in, co in a company, you're effectively becoming a shareholder. And in today's day and age, with you know the internet and with everything you know happening so quickly with instant gratification with having immediate you know liquidity where you can buy and sell a stock within seconds it's kind of like you know divorce you marry the stock and then you go around the corner and you go through the drive through and you get a divorce on the other side right that's how people are viewing investing is that they're only borrowing the shares and they're lending the shares only for the short term, and they're not really viewing it as being an owner of the business. By definition, a great company is one that's going to remain great for 30 years. If it's going to be great, a great company for three years, you know, it ain't a great company. I mean, it. Uh, uh, so you really want to go along with the, uh, the idea of something that if you were going to take a trip for 20 years, you wouldn't feel bad leaving... leaving uh, uh, the money in with no orders with your broker and no power of attorney or anything and you just go on the trip and you know you come back and it's going to be a, a terribly strong company. Uh, I think it's better just to own them. I mean, you know, we could uh, we could attempt to buy and sell some of the things that, that we own that we think are fine businesses, but they're too hard to find. So then once you understand what you're investing in and that you're an actual owner of a business, then it leads into the next question, well, why do you invest? Now, this is something that I struggled with a lot. And once I, I understood this, this was the biggest light bulb. The way that I think about investing is that there's really, you have to understand your why. Why are you doing something, right? You know, I gave the example of, of investing into, you know, basketball cards. My purpose behind buying those basketball cards, not only because I liked them, I thought they were cool, but that somebody was going to pay me more for them in the future. And that's very, very similar with other areas in the market, whether it be with real estate, it could be with the stock market, it could be in any, in many different areas of the market. Okay. And so the way that I think about investing and why you invest is think of it as a flip or a buy and hold. So the first example with this is you buy a home or you know a property and then your purpose of buying that property is to buy it low today and in the future you're going to sell it for a profit, for a gain. And it's the exact same concept with investing in the stock market. You're buying a, a share of, of stock in hopes that somebody else will come along and pay more for it than what you paid for it. That's the first school of thought of why we invest. The second school of thought is that you're going to buy something, buy an asset that is producing something and that it's paying you in return. And an example of this could be a rental property. You purchase the rental property and then you're living off of the cash flow from the rent. The exact same concept can be applied when we think about dividend stocks. When you think about a company like Coca-Cola, they're paying you as a shareholder to own and hold the company, hold shares of the company. They're paying you a quarterly dividend. It's the exact same concept. And so you have to ask the question, well, why are you investing? When you buy a stock or when you're thinking about buying you know, shares of a business, why are you doing it? Are you doing it with the purpose to flip it that you're paying, you know, the price today in hopes that a year from now or 10 years from now, somebody's going to pay more for it than what you did? Or is the purpose to buy it and hold it? 
So when you apply this to your own dividend portfolio, let's say you're new to this and let's say you have a handful of companies and ETFs in your portfolio. What I would encourage you to do is to go and look at all of the companies or ETFs in your portfolio. And I want you to ask the question, why do I invest in this? And then I want you to kind of analyze it stock by stock, ETF by ETF and say, am I holding this to flip it or am I holding this to generate cash flow? Based off of the answer of each individual position in your portfolio, it will help you understand what is the purpose? Why are you holding that stock or ETF in your portfolio? And once I understood that, everything was so clear. And it's important to mention that there's no right or wrong. There's many different paths that can lead to success, whether you want to buy it and then in the future sell it, or if you wanna buy it and hold it. They both can work, they're different strategies, they both have their pros and cons. But the important thing that most new dividend investors get wrong is they blindly go borrow a share of a stock and don't know why they're investing in it. And so it's really important that you understand the why. So lastly here, I wanna kind of round this out and summarize what I just talked about. So we talked about understanding what you're investing in and what you're investing in is you are an owner of a business. And the question is, is, is that what you are? Are you an owner or are you just borrowing the stock for the short term? And then the second part is why? Why are you investing? Are you investing to flip the stock for a gain or are you investing for cash flow? If you're a dividend investor, and you're looking to invest for cash flow, I wanna share something with you that's really, really important. What you're seeing here on your screen is the historical charting for Coca-Cola, ticker KO. The top line here, or the top section of this graph, is the share price of Coca-Cola over the last three years. The middle section here is the trailing dividend payment of Coca-Cola. And then the bottom here is the trailing dividend yield based off of the share price. But what I wanna focus on is the share price and the dividend payout. As you can see, the share price, it just, it goes up and down, right? The price can go up, the price can go down, and that can be a factor of their EPS growth, it could be a factor of their cash flow, it could be you know macro factors, many different things. The, the dividends, what you'll notice is it has stayed consistent regardless of what the share price has done. And if we expand this over five years, you can see more of the same, more fluctuation in the stock price, but consistent steady growth in the payout of the dividend. If you look over 10 years, more of the same. Now, there's not a lot of businesses that can tout this type of performance. And that is why it's so important to understand what you're investing in and why you're investing in it, okay? And so you'll see here after 10 years, more of the same. After 20 years, more of the same. After 30 years, more of the same. So the main point that I'm trying to make is you have to understand what you're investing in and why. Are you investing to flip Coca-Cola? Are you looking to buy low and then sell high in the future? Or is your why to buy this company, hold it, be a shareholder of this business and hold it forever. So understanding what we're investing in, that we're investing into a business and understanding why we invest, if you're looking to flip your portfolio, buy low and sell high, well then you wanna focus on the, the share price, the price of the stock. But if you want to, if your why is to buy and hold and to generate cash flow, from your portfolio, well then you wanna focus on the dividend growth, the growth of the dividend. And the share price should not concern you as much. Now, the important thing to remember here is, like I mentioned, there's no right or wrong. It depends on what is your personal why. The reason why investing is so difficult is there's so much noise. There's so many different opinions out there, what's best, what's right for you, and you know, according to some random person on the internet, what really matters is what's important to you. What are you investing in and why? Please subscribe. 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 Please subscribe. Subscribe. You know what? 
I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.